welcome to South Asia Today, a show that provides you the glimpses of South Asia. I'm your host Yeshi, here are the headlines. Baloch and Kashmiri human rights activists hold demonstrations in European cities called Pakistan a terrorist state. Tokyo station becomes iconic spot for tourists. And Hindus in India perform rituals free for souls of their ancestors. Let's begin the show. Quad is no more just a virtual grouping or what was being perceived as a paper tiger by Chinese media. The first in-person meeting of Quad leaders in the United States last week has laid out a clear framework vis-a-vis order and operations in the Indo-Pacific. All of them have signaled and integrated for a free Indo-Pacific. Unsettled by these developments, Beijing has resorted to its rhetoric calling it a conspiracy to contain Chinese growth. With pledges of solidarity, cooperation in fighting the COVID-19 and a commitment to push for integrated infrastructure building and technology, the Quad countries have held their first in-person Quad meeting that has been dubbed as an obstacle to Chinese expansionism by experts. All of them stress the importance of a free and open Indo-Pacific, while India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi also called for peace in the Indo-Pacific. Modi also underscored that grouping will be taking to supply a billion COVID-19 shots across Asia by the end of 2022, an initiative agreed at a virtual Quad summit in March. या वैश्विक सुरक्षा हो क्लाइमेट एक्शन हो या कोविड रिस्पांस या फिर टेक्नोलॉजी में सहयोग इन सभी विषयों पर मुझे अपने साथियों से चर्चा करते बहुत खुशी होगी हमारा क्वाड एक तरह से फोर्स फॉर ग्लोबल गुड की भूमिका में काम करेगा मुझे विश्वास है क्वाड में हमारा सहयोग Indo Pacific mein aur Vishwa mein shanti aur samruddhi sunishit karega. India, which had supplied millions of vaccines earlier in the year, had to immediately halt its export owing to a sudden rise in domestic infection rate. However, it is announced that it will resume the export in a few weeks. U.S. President Biden, who also urged for a united response to anything that was challenging the freedom of Indo-Pacific, thanked India for its decision. In sum, we are four major democracies with a long history of cooperation. We know how to get things done and we are up to the challenge. And I'm looking forward to uh, our discussion today. And I thank you. And uh, now I yield to my friend from India. The meeting came just over a week after the United States, Britain and Australia announced an AUKUS security pact under which Australia will be provided with nuclear-powered submarines, a move that has been roundly denounced by Beijing. Morrison further stated the Indo-Pacific should be free from coercion. Addressing a concern about Beijing's increasing assertiveness and growing influence in the region. So we stand here together in the Indo-Pacific region, a region that we wish to be always free from coercion, where the sovereign rights of all nations are respected and where disputes are settled peacefully and accordance with international law. Apart from the vaccine efforts, the Quad is also united at bolstering supply chain security for semiconductors, combating illegal fishing and boosting maritime domain awareness. It will also roll out a 5G partnership and plans for monitoring climate change. The Quad developments, however, have created ripples in Beijing power corridors, which have urged the grouping to not target any third country and its interests. China calls itself a builder of world peace, 
contributor of global development and upholder of world order. However, not many, or say it precisely, not even a few states acknowledge or support its stance. Moving on, today if the human rights violations had a face, it would be a fusion of the Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan and his Army General Kamar Javid Bajwa. Pakistani leaders have resorted to brutally to not just rein in those who do not fall in line, but have used it as its primary tool to suppress and eliminate those whom they don't identify as similar to themselves. Whether it is Kashmiris, Baloch, Sindhis or Pashtuns, the successive Punjabi dominant dispensations have meted out similar atrocities on all. However, they are relentless in their demands and say they will not give up until their rights are restored. Recently, European cities of London and Geneva saw people of these origins holding anti-Pakistan demonstrations and urging the world to cut off ties with Pakistan. A large number of Kashmiri activists gathered in London last week to protest the visit of Pakistani Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi. While highlighting Islamabad state policy of nurturing and spreading terrorism in Kashmir and the region around Pakistan, they urged the UK leadership to corner Pakistan on the subject. Activists accused Pakistan of using terrorists to carry out ethnic genocide in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and said over 500,000 Kashmiris were systematically killed by the state in the past seven decades. Protests which we have arranged here, the purpose of Pakistan's foreign minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi is here. We are doing this to him. 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 This is why in 70 years, we are doing this to him. 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 اقوام متحدہ میں گئے انہوں نے تقریر کیا ہے واپس آ کر وہ بھی سو گئے کیونکہ کشمیروں کا ناک خون جو قتل ریزی ہو رہی ہے پاکستانی ایجنسیوں کی طرف سے ہم انٹرنیشنل کمیونٹی سے پرزور مطالبہ کرتے ہیں کہ اس کو اقوام متحدہ میں ضرور پیش کیا جائے کہ پاکستان جو دہشتگردی وہاں کروا رہا ہے اندر مقبوضہ کشمیر میں اور ہمارے بے گناہ کشمیریوں کو مروایا جا رہا ہے فائیو ہنڈرڈ تھاؤزنڈ Pakistan, which continues to find itself in the grey list of the Financial Action Task Force, has earned the reputation of a terror state in the past few decades. Its nefarious agenda was recently exposed in its western neighbour Afghanistan where it provided active military support to the Taliban to topple a democratically elected government. Activists allege that Islamabad had similar ambitions of installing a terrorist government in Kashmir by altering the region's demography. Kashmiri said, while the number of terror camps and launch pads has exponentially increased in the region in the past few years, rights activists are being imprisoned, tortured and killed. We all stand for peace, democracy, secularism and social justice. And these are the values Pakistani state is against. So, we request Pakistan to change their policies of terrorism. Pakistan is an international hub of terrorism. They support terrorism. They produce terrorists. They fund terrorists. They support militancy all over the world. Pakistan harbors terrorism. So we are here to tell the people of Jammu and Kashmir that we stand for you. 
A protest was also held in Geneva on the sidelines of the recent UNHRC session, blaming Pakistan for blatant human rights violations and its unwavering support to terrorists. Activists said that those who were exposing Pakistan were not safe even in Europe, America or anywhere in the world as Pakistani agency ISI was constantly following them. Last year, prominent activist Kareema Baloch and journalist Sajid Hussain were found murdered under suspicious circumstances. <laughs> And they are always trying to suppress the voices of Daesh Bara, Sindhis, Baloches, Pashtuns and the Kashmiris who actually expose internationally the real face of Pakistan. If they think that they will stop us or they will, they will stop our voice, that's why it will never stop. Our voice will raise more and more. Crushing dissent with brute high-handedness has become a norm in Pakistan. And with the press acting as a tool to further state propaganda, all crimes have either been whitewashed, appropriated or have been given an entirely opposite spin. These victims, however, feel that one day their sustained efforts will pay off and they will gain their rights or complete freedom from Pakistani rule. Now we take a look at some happenings in Asia in a segment called Asia Watch. India and Nepal recently held a joint project monitoring committee meeting on post-earthquake reconstruction projects in the Himalayan nation. During the meeting in Kathmandu, a comprehensive review of the progress of the Indian government assisted post-earthquake reconstruction projects in housing, education, health and cultural heritage sectors in Nepal was carried out, said the statement issued by the Indian Embassy in Kathmandu. Both sides expressed satisfaction with the successful completion of 50,000 houses in Gorkha and Nuakot districts of Nepal constructed under the Government of India's assistance in the housing sector. Similarly, both sides also noted with appreciation the progress achieved in reconstruction projects being undertaken under education, cultural heritage and health sectors in Nepal. The meeting was co-chaired by Anurag Srivastava, Joint Secretary of Ministry of External Affairs of India and Sushil Chandra Tiwari, Secretary, National Reconstruction Authority of India. As per the release, the JPMC mechanism was set up in August 2017 to monitor the Government of India-assisted post-earthquake reconstruction projects in Nepal. The meeting was attended by representatives of concerned ministries, department and agencies of Government of Nepal, officers and officials of Government of India, consultants and other stakeholders engaged in the implementation of the projects. Jordan fully reopened its main border crossing with Syria in a boost for their struggling economies following a push by Arab states to reintegrate a country they have shunned during its decade-long civil war. A convoy of Syrian trailers waited to enter the Jordanian side of the border at the Jabir crossing. Police officers with dogs searched cars and coaches as they crossed through the gate. A stream of taxis with passengers also lined up to pass through the customs and immigration control. Syria, which blames Western sanctions for its economic woes, hopes wider sanctions links with its southern neighbor will help it recover from devastating conflict and attract much-needed foreign currency. Officials in Jordan, a US ally and Lebanon have urged Washington to ease sanctions on Syria to facilitate trade. Although the Jabir crossing has been partially open since 2018, after the Syrian government drove rebels from the south, trade has yet to recover to its $1 billion pre-war level. Cleaning of the iconic Dal Lake is in full swing in India's northern Srinagar city as authorities try to restore the beauty of the lake and bring in more tourists. Jammu and Kashmir Lakes and Waterways Development Authority brought machine to speed up the cleaning process as manual cleaning was also done to clean lily, weed, 
and garbage from the lake. Dal Lake is integral to tourism and recreation in Kashmir and is named the jewel in the crown of Kashmir or Srinagar's jewel, with houseboats being a major tourist attraction for decades in the beautiful Kashmir Valley. The lake also acts as an important source for commercial operations in fishing and water plant harvesting. Over the years, the Dal Lake has deteriorated considerably as thousands of tons of seaweed spew into it, feeding weeds and choking the lake and its aquatic life of oxygen. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un said he is willing to restore severed inter-Korean hotlines, but accused the United States of proposing talks without changing its hostile policy to the country, state media KCNA reported this week. The decision comes amid a series of missile tests conducted by both Pyongyang and Seoul, which the latter has referred as preventive measures. In a quote carried by state media KCNA, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un says he is willing to restore inter-Korean hotlines in October. According to KCNA, Kim said reactivating the lines would help realize the expectations and desire of the entire Korean nation for recovering cross-border relations, adding that we have neither aim nor reason to provoke South Korea and no idea to harm it. Meanwhile, Kim had tougher words for Washington, writing the US is touting diplomatic engagement and dialogue without preconditions, but it is no more than a petty trick to deceiving the international community and hiding its hostile acts. South Korea's Unification Ministry welcomed Kim's offer on the hotlines but did not comment on the other remarks. Moving on, Japan is a country rich with tradition, culture and technology. Its city offers visitors a unique taste of Japanese culture and its beautiful landmarks. On one side, Tokyo Station has become an iconic spot for visitors and is loved by people of all walks of life. On the other side, food trucks line up building squares and parks, offering delicious Japanese cuisines to visitors. Have a look. Tokyo Station is the entry point for visitors. The Marunouchi Station building was constructed in Tokyo as a symbol of Japan's modernization and developed along with Japan's representative business district. Its long history witnessed many historical events. In 2012, Tokyo Station an important national cultural property was rebuilt to its original appearance. いろんなあの国の方々を迎えるのに、やっぱりこういうま広いま敷地でま寄ったりとしたこうままっすぐでま正面にちょうど公共があるっていうまロケーションなんかはすごくま海外の方なんかもま喜んでもらえるんじゃ
The food truck business has been active in Japan for several years. These days, popular dishes include Vietnamese sandwiches, Asian chicken rice, and charcoal grilled fish. In order to attract customers, the restaurant offers trendy dishes. Food truck place is in public parks and building square, where there are benches and tables available for eating. It is a Japanese noodle food truck, popular among foreign tourists. In this truck, special containers are used to make it easy to carry around. It feels like a luxurious food truck and this traditional Japanese dish that is dipped in sweet sauce and grilled over charcoal. コロナ禍ということもあって、店内に傷なかったりする方がやっぱりこっちから外に出て、うなぎを販売していこうかなという思いで、ジュレのレストランでは、お客様大体30分ぐらい待たせしちゃうんですけれども、やっぱり5分10
it's time for me to wrap up today's episode. We will be back next week at the same time. This is Yeshi signing off on behalf of the entire production team of South Asia today. Goodbye and take care.